Welcome back to another Inkscape tutorial. In this video, we're going to be using Inkscape to do some more mapping. Uh, but this time, we're not going to actually get a vector map like we did in the last video. Instead, we're just going to grab some satellite imagery and uh, basically create something like this. So this is a, an example of one I've done. I just did like a screenshot and got this imagery of this property. And then I did some, uh, you know, put a little tree line. I drew like some green circles here to show trees. I actually did some measuring, and so I know exactly like if I were to build a 50 by 100 foot shop, what the footprint would look like on this property. So this is actually a 50 acre property that I have here in Idaho, and this is sort of the mock-up of what I want it to look like. So I want this is a future building site for a house in yellow, and all of these are just separate objects, and so they're just drawn right on top of the actual. Uh, image, satellite image that I got from Google in this case. And so these are like some different areas for animals to be. This is an existing house right here. And this is like an addition that I want to put onto it and a little lean to over here, maybe plant a tree here. So it just gives you a good idea. These are going to be like some garden grow beds, like raised gardening beds. This is my go-kart racetrack. <laughs> like I said, it's 50 acres. It has a pond over here and uh, some different ponds that I'm going to add in the future and some a nice treed area. But so this just helps me see exactly what I want to do. And then I actually have these different uh, things too. Like I have a one acre. This is how large one acre is. So if I, I could kind of overlay it and it's shaded a little bit so I could see how much one acre, like my I could see my solar, my solar array over here is going to be uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. you know, it'll be about a quarter or a third acre maybe is how much it, it will take up. I have a six acre pasture here and I can I could change the color of this to red or to green. It just sort of shades over and I can see still what it'll, you know, I can see sort of the contour of the, the land underneath it. If I want to change like the pond like this, I can come over here and change the the size of the pond and have it be a little bit different. So just really, really cool tools. You know, a lot of times people think if this would be great for uh, uh, landscaping, if you're like a landscape architect, or uh, it's just good for, for construction or for visualizing uh, the use of an area. Um, so in this one, like I said, it's different than the last video we did because it's not actually, uh, we can't actually edit like these existing trees. It's just an image. So I'll show you how to do this. Um, there's another uh, property that in Idaho that's very rural here in Rockland, Idaho, middle of nowhere. So we're going to zoom in here, and I'll show you how to grab this footage, uh, or this footage, how to grab the uh, the actual image. I'm getting this one from OpenMapTiles.com, which is a much more open. I'm not quite sure. I don't think the satellite image you can actually use. Um, I'm not sure. I was reading on that, but they actually do offer free and open map tiles that you can actually download and uh, you can host your own maps um, privately and just use them for whatever you want. Okay, here we go. Right here's the property I'm looking at. So this is a teeny tiny little uh, off-grid house that I'm also working on and it's on 35 acres. Let's zoom in and see if we can get some clarity on it. Looks like that's about as clear as it's going to give us, unfortunately. So I'll zoom out a little bit here. But uh, the property goes, in fact, maybe I want to draw the property line. So what I'll do, I'll just copy this part of the image. To do that, there's some browser plugins you can install that you can actually make an a area selection and just select it. But I'm going to do the print screen key. So I'll just hit print screen. Uh, on Windows, that'll save it to your clipboard. So then you could open up a program like GIMP or even like Microsoft Paint. And then you can right click and go paste. In fact, we might be able to even do that here. If we right click and go paste, let's see. No, I don't think I put it into our clipboard because I'm on Linux here. And so what I need to do, let's just go File, New. And I'm actually going to, let's, uh, I'll just open, I'll, I'll find where that was, got saved to, which I think is my home directory. It's this one right here. Perfect. So now we've got this imagery. I'll make this full screen. And so I actually have two monitors, but this is the one. And I could bring it into uh, to GIMP and crop it. But for now, I can just leave it just like this. And now I can actually come over and draw over top of the building and make different notes on here. What is going on? Right click. Let's go to fill and stroke. 
turn my stroke size down to something more manageable and bring up opacity to 100%. Okay. We got some very wacky colors going on here. Let's just get rid of the stroke altogether by holding shift and clicking on this X in the bottom left hand corner. And now we can, uh, this is like really, really poor image. Also, you could do the same thing with a drone, with drone footage. So you can download your own uh, drone footage and uh, do it that way. So maybe I'll draw the house and I'll mark it in red. And then if I want to do the border of the property, I can get the uh, Bezier curve tool. And I just know this is actually where my property line goes. So I'm going to click. It goes just about like this. This is the 35 acres. Does it? Oh, no, no, no. It goes up here. Does it? Yeah, it does. Oops. It goes about to this little canyon over here. Now, I might not go that far. Now, I'll close this off, and it creates a black line. And then I can click a uh, color. So we'll do, maybe we'll do a, let's do a blue. And then this one, I can come over here to opacity under fill and stroke and turn it down. Oh, I have the image selected right now. I'll make sure that the object is select selected. Oh, that's blend mode. That's the opacity of the image. Let's do this. All right. So then I can just kind of see like that. And if, if I double click in here, I can come in, in and round out some of these and fix this one that I didn't want to have like that. Yeah, so there you go. So I can show someone this now. If I hold Alt, I can access and click that. Let's raise this to the top. Maybe let's make it yellow. And so I could I could show this. I could send this part of the map to someone now and say this is the the land. And I could put uh, a note in here that says 35 acres. We'll turn it white. So so you can see this is probably a really good tool for realtors or contractors or anyone that needs to make notes on on top of existing imagery. It's a really, really good way to go. And I could draw like an arrow. You can do arrows actually too. Let me show you that. So if we did uh, this curve tool again, we just, oops, I get the wrong tool. If I go like this and like this and hit enter, it's just a black line. And then we go into fill and stroke and we can change it over here, so it has, oh, it's not right there, it's the ending. So the marker, put an arrow oh, on the other end. So this will have an arrow right on the end of it, and now we have a nice arrow pointing here, and we can hold down shift and make the whole thing white. If we double click, we can change the length of it. So now I have an arrow here pointing to the house, and I can say something about it as well. So I can just control D, duplicate this text, change the size of it a little bit. And I'll say um, something like 1,200 square foot house. All right. Oops. There you go. So I've successfully um, created some nice information about this and if I wanted to do we could do like a future location of something like a pond or you know future location of something but yeah just a really great way that you can uh, quickly get in and add uh, a vector layer over top of an existing raster image like this uh, and then to export this what I would do is sometimes I'll just come over here and actually draw just a, a box over the part I want to export and then I turn down the opacity all the way down and then I just go to file export PNG image and I just export the selection I make sure selection is, is clicked right here and then I just go uh, we'll go export as we'll send it to pictures and we'll call it prop info dot P N G hit save and now we hit the export button uh, that did that, yeah, and I could change the, the size if I, if I wanted to of that. And now we can uh, come out of full screen here and we can go and see what that looks like. Where's our do, do, do right here? 
So here's our property info that we just did. So this is just a picture and it only shows just this part. So we could email this to someone. It's not a very large file at all. We could upload it to the web and we have a nice uh, map layer over top. This is something you can also do pretty reasonably using GIMP, um, like a, which is a free alternative to Photoshop. So hopefully you found this video informative. Um, go ahead and uh, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, and I'll catch you in the next video.